Why starting strength? Well, let's answer that question. Hey, it's Channel Ed, Brian Lape, back with neither a review nor something else. And this is part of my Road to Wichita Falls series. I kind of uh, set this off with a tweet uh, a week or so ago. And I'm going to be doing more videos. I'm hoping to do some stuff in the gym. i got to make sure I am allowed to do that. Uh, so the questions I've been getting from people, um, you know, I've been lifting weights off and on for 30 years. I, uh, several years ago, nearly pursued a personal trainer. There's an online personal training uh, courses as well as some practical and that stuff. I had uh, some personal trainers at the gym where I am. They've all since moved on, uh, offering to let me borrow their books because the books alone were going to be over $800. And I thought for a hobby, I don't know if I wanted to pursue that. But I have looked into all kinds of training methods over the years. Now, I still feel like I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, you know, I started with stuff out of Muscle Fitness a long time ago. I got a lot of things out of Iron Man. I've done bodybuilding more or less. You know, when I started back, I think it was about 1990. Um, granted, it was much younger. I was a lot thinner. I was 165 to 70 pounds. I gained 20 pounds pretty easily over about four or five months. And then for a long time, it was in, I was in the mid-190s. And it took a lot of more research and other things just to get 10 more pounds. And that's about where I am now. I was up to 215 at one time in some of the, my videos. Uh, with all the COVID stuff, I, I actually lost some weight. Um, and then I gained a little bit. And now I've been losing weight, but I've been gaining my strength back. So, I mean, I, I've done Steve Holman, 4X. I've done all kinds of things. So when I hit my 40s, I had to figure out what was going on. And part of my problem was I kept getting injured and different things and then I just wasn't working out for weeks. But it all comes down to results, okay? Over the last several years, in particular the decade when I was in my 40s, although by my mid 40s I knew what I wanted to do, I came across several different ideas. Now Steve Holman's 4X program is good for, for guys over in their 40s and 50s and the dogs are gonna start barking. Really dogs? And the, you know, a lot of it that's former bodybuilders. And part of what I didn't understand for a long time is that many of these guys are either genetically gifted, many of them are juicing, they're working out uh, a couple times a day. Um, and I didn't have that, right? My, my testosterone levels were probably not great even when I was younger. I was really, when I was in high school and college, played soccer, I was into distance running more. Um, you know, I know uh, Rip talks about things, and, and I'm going to get to this book in a second. You know, I know what it's like to run three miles. I used to run over three miles every day in about 18 minutes. I uh, was getting that down about three and a third miles was about 18 minutes. I could run a mile in under five and a half. Uh, I could run for two miles. Part of the problem was I would get bored, and I would slow down just out of boredom. But when I kept my pace, two-mile run uh, back, you know, almost 30, well not almost, oh, 30 years ago, we're talking somewhere in 10, 10 and a half minutes. Um, so I know what it's like to do that and I know what kind of endurance it takes. And I know there's a big difference between serious endurance and strength. Um, I used to work with a guy that was in the Navy SEALs and he would say, look, your legs need to, you know, it's one thing to be able to run out of a gully, let's say, but it's another thing to be able to carry your butt. And that's where the, the strength comes in. And uh, yes, you can build some endurance with a lot of strength, but the two do start to depart because you're not, you know, you look at marathon runners, you don't see a lot of really, especially in professionals, they look, they're really lean and thin. And then you look at a sprinter, say a 100 or 200 meter specialist, and they're pretty muscular. Now, they're not your competitive weightlifter, uh, Olympic weightlifter size, but they've got a lot of fast twitch muscles and explosive power, and there's a big difference. So, anyways, I've been looking at. Five at five by fives in the Texas method and several other things like deadlifts with five three one and, and I tried a whole mess of stuff over several years. I tried the uh, body um, squat every day. I got the bodybuilding.com app just to do that for a while. That made some differences and so I was like, well, I want to adopt some of this. But part of my problem is I would start to have neurological, uh, in, you, know, you know, fatigue and. I was like, how can I do something every day 
uh, that will help me build strength, help me build endurance and a nice balance because in the winter time I ski. I'm on ski patrol. I have to use strength. Uh, there's times I'm in ski boots for eight or nine hours and there are times I may not hardly ski at all and other times that's all I'm doing and other times I'm just taking um, sleds across to people. Our sleds are about, depending on which model, hush! They can be as much as 90 pounds a piece. The packs are somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds. Uh, so it can be quite, you got to have strength and endurance to do through this. And what I noticed with the things that I started looking at it and starting strength and, and uh, Ripito's videos online, I started to learn some things. I made comments. Some people thought I was trying to be snide about belts and stuff like that because I've never used belts. I do use gloves, although my gloves are getting old. I've got a really old pair of bodybuilding type gloves. These gray, uh, maybe weeder actually, um, from way back in the, the pads on the, on, the, on the hands. I got some newer ones a few years ago. They're starting to, to go, mainly because my gym doesn't have chalk. And uh, there was a time when I was actually, when I've traveled a few times, I've actually come across some, some serious hotel gyms that do have chalk, and it's awesome. So I re part of it is uh, some of these other programs, and this one, you know, even straight off, my only half, my gym's pretty small. We have one rack, and that's where the bench is. There's a Smith machine and a rack. So if you're doing bench or squats or uh, good mornings or, um, and you want some rack uh, pieces there, or good mornings, not so much, but squats, definitely, uh, Romanian deadlifts, things like that, uh, some of the workouts I was doing, I did, a, I mean, I downloaded the 5x5 five five app for a while, and it was taking me an hour, and I would be in the rack the whole time, and people were getting annoyed, and then my wife said something that she would join, she never did come back, but she said, can I do it shorter? And what I noticed when I was doing shorter workouts, I recovered a little bit quicker, I had more strength the next day, and I felt better. So part of it was, I got to reduce, I'm in too much volume, too much other things, I started reducing to half an hour to 45 minutes, some of them are in there. I've mixed, sometimes I do squats with deads and I've kind of experimented with that. And then when the ski season would start around, it was, do I have enough strength and endurance to get through the ski season? And some years I didn't and some years I did. I took note of what I did during the off season and I improved. So I finally ordered this book. Now you might say, why in the world are you gonna order this book? You've been watching these videos for a while. You pretty much, I've, I do some five, five by five type things. I've reduced it. So that I'm doing bench on one day, serious squats on another day, overhead press on another day, and squats on another day, or deadlifts. I just recently added rows back in. The bent over rows will bother my back. Watch several videos with Rip. I'm going to watch some more. I, I know I was doing them wrong. And what I, the other thing that happened too is my, my schedule had to change. So about in my mid-40s, there was a brief time <clears throat> when my son was going to a particular school they rearranged them, and his school didn't start till like 8.30. And so I start, I was way too late to, by the time I, because I had to drop him off and all this stuff because they didn't have busing. And uh, because we lived too close. And I was going, I had to go right by his school on the way to work. So I uh, was way too late in the evening, so I moved to the morning. And what I noticed about the morning when I did strength training, 5x5 five five or 3x5 five or any, basically... I could do some sets of eight, especially finishing moves, and I have added some of that stuff back in, like after chest, I might do some flies, or I might do some arm work, but or I might do a little bit of light arm work just to warm up. Um, my strength, once I recovered, my energy was really high, and my thermogenetic, genetic, uh, sorry, yeah, I was very warm, too. Couldn't sleep at night, but having that happen at 10 o'clock in the morning was great. I had energy for all day. So when he changed schools and went back to the evenings, and I did that for a while, and I just didn't like it. Couldn't sleep, wasn't sleeping well, and I just, I just flipped it back around. Now, with all the stuff and working from home, I'm not at the gym as early as I used to, plus changing jobs in other places where, you know, I'll, there's some startups I work for, and getting there by 9, you're like an early bird. Uh, and then sometimes people would work from home anyway and maybe come in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and do some stuff in the office and, and the like. So I started going back in the morning, and I really do like it. Now I tend to be the youngest one there, although not this morning. Uh, and then when I hit my 50s, got into my 50s, things really changed quite a bit. And the 5x5 five five style of programming really worked better. And I don't have my phone here, unfortunately, but I use the Stronger app. It's this guy in France, as far as I know. Uh, he created it. 
and um, I got some bugs fixed on, you know, helped him with some development several years ago. I paid for it. I paid for a couple other things. My progression's not great. And this gets back to this again because I've looked at some of the seminars. I don't know if I'm ever going to be a starting strength coach, but they had these one-day events here and there, or they would just cover the bench or just cover the squat. And I know I'm doing something fundamentally wrong, in particular when it gets heavy. I've had the trainers at my gym look at my form. They can't find anything out. But I would hit ceilings, and I don't mean just slightly bounce off. I would way bounce off. Some of it's mental, but some of it was physical. And I would have some injuries and other things. I'm like, I've got to be doing something fundamentally wrong. So I just turned 52. As part of my birthday to myself, I got this book. I also signed up for the the uh, August in in mid August there's a seminar a one day seminar on a Saturday down in Wichita Falls and that's the other thing people ask me why in the world would you drive 16 hours okay one way to go to a one day workshop now the workshop is is it's about half price of the full one but it goes into more detail than some of the other ones but not as much as say the the three two to three days for the starting strength coach. And who knows, maybe it'll lead me to go into the full seminar and taking the exam and being a starting strength coach or cert whatever the certification is just to have, just to have the knowledge. I mean, I'm a computer nerd. I do programming for a living. I'm not going to switch necessarily to being a coach. And maybe after I retire, I don't know. And I don't know. And maybe it leads that way. Maybe it doesn't. Okay. That's fine. Wherever this goes is where it goes. But... Really, I know this says for beginners, but this is a big uh, foundation, a good foundation for people who want to build strength. And I like that it gets me, being a developer, I like to overcomplicate things, okay? And, and sometimes it just happens. And I don't say like, I tend to overcomplicate. And my training sessions, I look back on my old journals and everything, it... You know, because I used to just write everything. Before I found an app I liked, I just wrote everything down, all my weights, my times, and I, I have it in a drawer somewhere still, a little notebook. And I was constantly tweaking that. And sometimes I would do a workout in, say, Iron... Well, Iron Man became essentially like a men's health magazine, but there was some hardcore stuff that I was looking at that was better. And, you know, things worked okay, but I never got the size, I never got the strength. I mean, I still haven't... I've never bench-pressed my own, my own body weight. Uh, a couple years ago, I actually went over my weight I'm doing this, following a, a, a starting strength style or 5x5 five five or Texas method, whatever you want to call it, I was able to finally get my deadlift over body weight and my squat over body weight for, for reps, okay? And I just like a one rep max. And my shoulders had issues all the time. Years ago, I used to do, I had some things and so... There's some strength here, some other things that I, I was like, why in the world do I have shoulder problems? Why is it does it hurt? Well, there's certain things that I've trialed with Jeff Cavalier, and I've looked at some other stuff, and it's like little bits and pieces of information from many, many sources, like this works, this doesn't, this work, this work. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. So, anyway, I know I'm talking quickly because this thing has a 20-minute timer, and I'm home by myself with the dogs, so I don't know when it's going to turn off, but... I'm looking forward to really getting into the meat and potatoes of this book and understanding some more things. You know, I do have some anatomy knowledge. I do have some physiology knowledge. So I'm not com coming from a complete beginner standpoint. And I'm in my 50s now. I don't, I'm not going to be a competitive bodybuilder ever. I never really had those aspirations. Highly doubt I'm going to be a power lifter of any sort unless it's, you know, the retirement league for people who were never into it. Um... But I did have a goal before all the nuts, the craziness started and my gym closed. And I was on target by early May to be able to do a 225 bench, a 315 squat, and a 405 deadlift. I was headed that direction. And um, basically about four and a half pounds, well, I think depending on the lift, it was anywhere from four and a half to three and a half pounds a week increase. And at the time, I was increasing 10 pounds a week. And uh, so I knew that at some point it would be 10, and then it's probably going to be 5, and then it's probably going to be 2 and a half or something, or it, was, or it might take me two weeks to put on 5 pounds or whatever. It was fine. I was going to buy early May. Each individually, I was going to be able to do that. And then I was going to work on how to do each one for reps. 
And on my birthday, the idea, well, I shouldn't say early May, late May, early June. Because my birthday is near the end of June, and, the, and it was on a Sunday, and it was like, i tell you what, that's what I wanted to do, and record it. And then all this fun and game started, and I did get to, but I'm about 90 to 95% back to where I had been. I'm into my fourth week, and things were looking great. I don't know when I'll hit those weights. I'm going to let, figure some stuff out. I have tweaked my exercises a little bit since my gym reopened. And I also have to look forward to ski season. I know it's it's end of June, early July when I'm recording this, but um, ski season will be upon me before I know it, and I got to make sure that I've headed the right direction and, and start follow some things. Basically, at the end of this cycle, where I current, I just started today with the bench press. I have a seven day exercise cycle. At the end of that, I'm going to evaluate and start marking down my goals for weights and what I want to do. But um, anyway. So this is what I'll be reading, I'll be studying in preparation for the seminar in August. Uh, and it's going to be two days each way on the road. I, I think eight, ten hours a day is about all I can do anymore. And I'll be by myself. Uh, you know, it's going to take longer. i, I got to go pat, near my, where my sister lives and I may visit her, may not, I don't know yet. Um, because it's going to be a week off just to, to attend the seminar. And so that's why. The, the results that I've been getting with the simplest of methods, uh, the cutting out all the BS and getting down to things that work to build strength, I know, you know, I'm well past any delusions of anything larger. And, you know, I just want to be able to lift stuff. I want to get back to about 10, 215, 220. That was a good weight with strength for my skiing and everything else. I don't know if I want to be much more than that. People wonder, I mean, before I started shrinking a little bit and not standing up straight, I was 6'5". That's the other thing people don't understand when they watch some of my videos. They really don't know what my size is. But even that, I've been in the gym when I was two to even 215, and people thought I was 185, okay? So my body fat's pretty low, and I carry my weight very well because of my long femurs. That's another thing that I discovered about my squats, in particular my deadlifts. One of Rip's videos, he's got a guy, now it's a pretty husky guy, but he's got a guy with long femurs, and that was, I was part of what my problem was when I would get heavy, and then my back would bother me for two weeks. That video helped solve. And so I look forward to... Uh, my goal is to be about 90 to 95% correct and have Rip get me that last 10%. And that is the biggest reason I want to go there, get straight from the experts, because it's those tiny little tweaks, right? It's that the easy part is this. And it's that last little part where I just need the nice kick in the teeth and get it done, get it corrected go multiple reps so I, I get my muscle memory, get my brain out of the way, my body just knows instinctively where it's supposed to be, and just continue to make gains, what, however those look. If it's weight, you know, I, I can lift strong higher weights, or if it's, hey, I can do, you know, four set, five sets of five at 405 as opposed to one, it doesn't matter to me what exactly those gains are, just to keep making a good progression, stay in good shape, st have good strength and endurance for the things on that I like to do. I, have, I mean, I've been doing ski patrol for 25 years. I have no clue when I want to stop, but I want it to be, you know, I'm just tired of doing it, not a physical problem because I failed to work out properly and now I've injured myself. Now, I understand I've been hit several times by skiers. I get it. Things happen. Those things I can't control, but... My own health I can have an influence on, and as much as I can, that's what I want to pursue. All right? So there you go, everybody. There's several reasons why starting strength is quite important uh, and to me and why I've pursued this. Uh, you know, this is a newer seminar from what I understand. I think it's the Self-Sufficient Lifter, I believe is what it's called. Uh, and I look forward to getting all my homework done and out of the way so that I can get can number one, get the most out of the seminar as possible, and number two, not be a hindrance to anyone else because I didn't come prepared for class. And I want to be prepared for class so that everyone who's attending gets what they need and I don't get in anybody's way. All right? Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for clicking like and subscribing, and I will see you later. Goodbye.